Hi there. In today's video, I'm going to create a ChatGPT powered command line tool with Python to solve the following problem. So recently I realized that my hard drive was getting full and I wanted to find all of the large files that I have on my file system so that I can free up some space. So of course I started to type the find command, but then I realized I don't remember how the find command works. I remembered that you have to specify the type of file, so either file or directory, but I didn't remember if it was tf or t file or if it was type f. And then since I wanted to find large files, then I knew I had to specify the size, but again, I didn't remember if it was s or size or maybe it was dash dash size. And since I wanted to find large files, then I wanted to specify some sort of minimum size. But do I specify it in bytes? Or do I have to say 1 GB? Or what? I don't remember. So ultimately I had to Google it. But that gave me an idea. Couldn't ChatGPT convert whatever pseudo commands I write here into the actual command? So in this case, ChatGPT would be correcting my hallucinations instead of me correcting ChatGPT's hallucinations. So let's try and build this tool. It shouldn't be that difficult. So let's jump right into it and let's create a file. Let's call it gpt.py. And let's add here some hashbang user bin env python3. I think that is how you do it. And then we are going to print something just to test that this actually works. So let's print hello. And let's then schmort this thing with plus x. So now we should be able to run gpt.py and it works. So what do we actually want to do in here? Well, the way I want this tool to work is I want to be able to say gpt and then my pseudo command. So for example, find t file and size plus one gig. And then it should convert this into whatever the actual find command is that will work. So I guess we need to read all of these command line arguments. So let's try and do that. So I guess we can call this uh, pseudo and let it equal to something. I guess we can use sys.argv. And of course we have to import sys. And how do we get all of the argument? Well, I think we can use some Python magic here and do something like one to the end. So zero would include the program name, but we don't want that. So we say one until the end. So let's do print sudo. And if we then actually run this. So right now I have to do dot slash gpt.py. And then if I say find type f and I run it, then I will get find type and f. But actually, I don't want a list. I want them to be together. So I will say space join this thing. So if I now run this, then now I get the whole command here. Okay, that's great. So then we need to send this command to chat GPT and ask it to convert it into a real command. So how do we do that? Well, let's import open AI. And we have to set our OpenAI API key. So let's do that. OpenAI.API key equals, and I'm going to do os.getEnv to get it from the environment variable. OpenAI API key. And I have to import os. And I should actually add this into my environment. So let's do export OpenAI API key equals something. And I'm going to get my OpenAI API key from platform.openai.com from API keys. And let's create a new one. Pseudo term. This is the name of my project. And let's copy this thing and paste it here. Okay, now we have the API key in there. So let's then create some sort of chat completion. So let's do OpenAI chat completion create and let's use the model gpt 3.5 turbo and let's set the messages to equal something we're going to have a user message which will have a role of user and a content of something 
what is the content of our message? We should say something like convert this pseudo command into a real command that can be run in the terminal. Note that the command might include misspelled arguments or invalid arguments or even imagined arguments, misspelled invalid or imagined arguments or even imagined program names. Try your best to convert it into an actual command that would do what the command seems to be intended to do. And let's add a couple of new lines here and let's put the code here. So let's just use plus here and say sudo. And maybe we should add a couple of more new lines and say respond only with the command. Let's see what this will do. So we of course have to get the response from this. So let's say response is that. And in the response we are going to have the command which will be response choices zero message content. If I remember this correctly. So let's then just print this command and let's try to see if this works. So we will run again gpt.py and let's give it a find tfs plus 1g and run it. And look at this. <laughs> we got exactly what we need. So these are the actual arguments we would have to give. So <laughs> we gave tf and s plus 1g, but actually it's type f size plus 1g. So it works. Now I do a lot of video editing on my computer. So I would probably want to find the largest video files. So what if I say the type is a video, what will it do? It is going to find all the MP4 files, <laughs> which is pretty good. But of course I want to find all of the different video files. I don't want to find just MP4s. I have MKVs. So could we add a format and give it all and run this? Well, unfortunately not. How could we do this? Could we say a format MP4 NKV AVI? And then we could do this. Then <laughs> we actually created a little bit more of a complicated command, which I actually would not have known that you can actually do, but it might actually work. So let's actually make it so that we can run this command. Now, it's probably not a good idea to directly run the command, so we could have some sort of confirmation. So how should we print this? Maybe we just add here like a um, command, and then we add the command here. And then we ask confirmation is input run, yes or no. And then if confirmation is why, then we are going to run it. How do we actually run commands from Python? Um, I think it's sub process run. So we have to import sub process. And then we can do sub process run. And if I get some auto completion, then I could actually do something. And I am writing PHP right now. So <laughs> I forgot what language I am using. So of course we have to do this. And what does this take? It takes the arguments. And then we get std in, std out, std error. And I believe that we can just pass the args as the command. And we can say shell equals true. But I'm not sure where the output will go. Will this print the output? Let's see what this will do. So let's try to do something simple. Like, let's do print hello world times five. So this is, of course, the command to print hello world five times on the terminal. And what is this command? Python gpt.py5. Where did it get gpt.py? Did I do something wrong here? Wait a minute. How did it 
add this in here. No, I don't want to run that. That is interesting. We should have space here. But how is that the command? It must have gotten the gpt.py from somewhere. Let's try this one more time. Why does it want to run this command? Let's actually see what is our sudo. Print sudo. And let's do it again. Oh, I'm sorry. This star is some sort of placeholder for the name of the program. I didn't actually know that. So let's try to do x5. Okay, so this is going to actually work. So if we run this, then it only runs it once. But I wonder if this is because we are running it with sub-process. So if I actually run this command here, then, oh, it still doesn't work. Interesting. So let's try again. Let's do the same thing. Echo, <laughs> hello world, x5. Okay, but at least we can run it. So let's actually try to find some files. So what if we do this? gpt.py find and I'm going to find from dot dot slash which is all my projects I'm going to find the type of Python code and I'm going to find was that um, contain sub process dot run so I want to find all of my Python project files that contain sub process dot run so let's run this and here's the command. So we are going to find from dot dot slash all the files that have dot pi in the name and we are going to find the ones that have sub process dot run in the name. So let's actually run this and see if we actually get something. And we get a bunch of stuff here. And here they are all. Now some of these results are from these site packages but I don't want to include those. So I will actually say exclude site packages and let's run this again so now we are going to exclude the directory site packages so let's run it and look at this um it didn't work <laughs> so actually what i wanted to do is i wanted to say exclude path contains site packages so this is of course the command what am i doing here and now we are going to do this and this would actually work so let's run it and here we have all of the actual project files that I have written that include subprocess.run. So that's pretty cool. But now what I actually would like to do is I would like to be able to run this from anywhere just by saying gpt and then whatever command I want to run. So I can make a symbolic link to gpt.py but I believe I have to set the full path or I guess I could just copy it there so I could cp gpt.py into user bin slash gpt and probably I need sudo to do this so can I now run gpt find files bigger than 1g I can so now it is going to run the command that's great so let me remove the print of the sudo from here and of course, I have to now copy it again there. But now, I should be able to run this anywhere. So if I go, for example, to my GPT Autopilot project, and let's say I want to find all of the files that connect to the OpenAI API, then I could do something like GPT find type Python contains OpenAI dot chat completion. And I want to have all of the locations, all locations, and I want to include all of the line numbers because I want to see every place where I'm using this. So let's try and do this. And we are going to find all of the Python files and we are going to grab them with OpenAI chat completion. Let's do this. And look at this. <laughs> we have on line 50 in some file so we don't actually get the file name so I forgot I have to add include file name then now we're going to get this command and it added this h here so let's run this and there you go now I can find all of the files that contain 
OpenAI chat completion. And of course I can control click and it actually opens it here. So that's pretty cool. So what else could we do with this command? I think the possibilities are endless. Could I actually use this with git? So if I do git log in this particular place, and what if I want to revert the last two commits? So can I do gpt git revert last two commits? Then what will it do? And I even wrote it wrong, so let's see what happens. But now the ChatGPT API seems not working properly. This often happens, so we should actually add some timeout to this. So let's try to do this again. Okay, so that is actually the command that I should run. So if I run it, then I can't actually do it because I have some changes in this particular project. So let's put some finishing touches on this project. So first of all, I would like to do the following. If we didn't provide any of the pseudocode, then we should give some error. So I guess I can just do if sudo is an empty string. We are going to print usage. GPT, I guess we should use here the sys.argv0 and we should say sudo command and we should exit with one. And I will do sys.exit because otherwise I think it won't work on Windows. And that's another thing we should do. We should detect what operating system you are on. But let's see now if I do gpt.py and I will say just that. It will say usage is that. And I wrote sudo wrong. So now we have done that. Now also I would like to add the timeout to this OpenAI request because the OpenAI API is often very slow. But if you retry, then it works. So there is something called request timeout. I don't quite remember. Can I see it from here? Um, I cannot. So I will actually do gpt find dot slash gpt autopilot contains timeout type python include file name include line number. So I'm going to find it from my GPT autopilot project. So let's run this. And yes, it is in fact request timeout. So I will set it to 10 seconds and I am going to then try this. And I'm going to catch, sorry, I don't catch, I accept. And I don't remember what the exception was. It's something like timeout error, maybe. I will actually do again, find, um, okay, let's use timeout with a capital T and let's do that. We didn't find anything. So let's find all of the uh, accepts in this, except because I remember that I catch this exception there or not. Okay, it tries to find from the name, but I want to uh, say file contains and that looks proper. Okay, we are catching all kinds of exceptions here, but do we have any timeout exceptions here? We do not. So I guess that will be a mystery. <laughs> so I'm going to just accept everything now. Although where does timeout error come from? Can I find openai.error object, um, invalid request error, timeout. There's no such thing. Maybe it is an invalid request error. Um, maybe I can just do this. I will not add the try block here. And I am just going to say request timeout is one. <laughs> and I'm going to try. So I'm going to do this. And we actually get the timeout here. So what is it? Open AI error timeout. Okay. So we will catch this one. Open AI error timeout. Is that what it was? Yes. So then we can do something like print open AI API timeout error. Try again and yes or no. And I'm going to actually make this an input and this again confirmation or retry and if retry equals yes, then we are going to retry. 
So how do we retry? <laughs> we have to make this a function. So let's do define make command and this will take the sudo command sudo command and let's pass in here and we are going to run this thing again if we want to retry so we are going to say return make command with the sudo command and let's add here this colon and otherwise we are going to return the response or in fact we're going to return the command so this here and let's just return this and we are going to just say command is make command sudo and i actually want it be in a variable so i will say command and i will say command equals that all right so now we should be able to retry if there is a timeout so if i set the timeout to one and i try to do this then it will say open ai api timeout try again if i say no then in fact i should exit <laughs> but i didn't do that so let's first of all add a space there and otherwise we are going to sys.exit1 so let's try again if i say no i don't want to try again it exits if i say yes then it's going to try again and it will fail again but if i change this to 10 it should work if i run it then I am going to get the command and I can run it. Great. And if I actually run it, then it did not work because we tried to find files that have Python in the name. Now it doesn't work perfectly every time, but I mean, maybe we can use GPT-4 <laughs> and maybe that will work better. Okay. Now we use grep directly. Grep, RNW, this one, and E except include pi. Okay. Does that actually work? In fact, it works. <laughs> so perhaps it is actually better to use GPT-4 for this, because I don't think this will cost that much money, even though the GPT-4 API is more expensive than the GPT-3, but this is such a small prompt that probably doesn't, but I will default it to that. So what else should we do? I guess we should check this in case there's some error in the completion. So we might not have choices and zero and message and content, but I'm not actually sure what is the best way of doing this because I don't want to do stuff like this. I don't want to say if choices not in response, then do something. And then if zero not in response choices, then do something. And if message not in response choices, zero then do something is there just something like see if this exists if it doesn't then give an error or something not sure you can make a pull request on my github repository after i publish this if you know how to fix that but i think this is going to be the final product at least for now let me know in the comments if you have some ideas what i should add to this and let me know what did you use it for. And if you like this kind of videos, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. And I'll see you in the next one.